Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Today we've got a really special one by my one of my favorite designers. This is Williams Bad Cats Pinball Machine. I think this was 89 or 90. We'll see here in a minute. We got this in a long time ago, a couple years ago actually. And we've just got so many projects that we uh, sometimes stuff like this that's a little nicer gets the back burner because it's going to take a little bit of work to give it the attention that it deserves. But we finally decided, hey, let's fix up the Bad Cats because I really want to play it. Right? So we bought this a couple years ago and it's been sitting around waiting on its time and its time is now. So if you've never seen this game, it's a very creative game. Uh, mainly because of Mr. Python, but we'll, uh, well, I don't want to give him all the credit, but his art's awesome. Uh, but we'll check it out, and we're going to work through it and fix it all up, get it back in nice shape. So the main thing, the first thing that I noticed whenever I bought it was these have these really striking orange cabinets, similar to my wall there, um, with Python Angelo's famous style of art on it but on this particular cabinet look at the back box it's yellow it's no longer orange and for a while we thought well maybe it was it's very confusing because we thought well maybe this is a maybe this is a different version where it had a yellow top right but we came to the conclusion that I think what's going on here is they sold so many of these that they had several different styles, I believe. So the bottom is actually stenciled, it's painted on the wood, it's painted. And the top, if you look right here, if we can get it to focus, is actually a decal, or however they did it. Maybe they silk screened it on vinyl. Yeah, there you go. See that? So it's actually a decal. So I think they made different versions. I think they made one version that was all painted and then they made another version that was decals and then somehow this version is both. So I, I don't believe anybody swapped the head or anything. That'd be a lot of trouble. I think what happened was in the factory they were kind of mix matching stuff together and using what they what they had around. So we ended up with a nice painted bottom that's in really good shape, at least on the sides. The front has a little bit of wear. But all of the all of the uh the orange is there. And the red is there. And on the back box, I think what's going on is, I may be wrong. But the best I can tell is I think that yellow was probably originally orange and faded to yellow uniformly because it was somewhere where it got a lot of light. And then the orange cat I think was probably originally red and faded to orange. And then the Williams logo was originally red but faded to orange and the white was white. So I think we've got this weird thing where everything that's yellow was originally orange, everything that was orange was originally red. So I thought maybe we'd just leave it like that, but then um, it's kind of the only thing really detracting from the cabinet. So I, I uh, was able to get new decals for just the head, just the back box, the sides. So I've got some decals we're gonna put on there, get that looking a lot better. Um, we'll see how that turns out. But uh, when we got it, it had a broken back glass. And I was able to find a nice original back glass from Marco Specialties in Columbia. And our friend Trevor drove by, picked it up, and brought it to us. Now, you've probably seen this game before if you're watching this, but it's just bananas. <laughs> Python Angelo did the artwork, and it's just there's stuff everywhere. We'll go we'll go over all that in the uh, the video where we actually play it. But this is just the video where we look at condition and start fixing it. You can see this side is a little more faded than the other side, and at some point somebody has tried to touch up both sides with a nasty mustard-colored paint. 
Now on the play field, let's look at this. This probably ought to be said. Play field by Barry Orsler. Also a legend, right? Software by Ed Sakachi. Sushoki. I don't, I'm not uh, familiar with all of these guys, so I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing their names. Mechanics by Don Sondage, with support by Al Cardenas, Art Clafford, and Mark Johnson. And then over here, it says, Sounds and Music by Dan Forden, Good Management Support by Walter Smolica and Joe Jews, Cats and Dogs, Bees and Birds by the Pinball Python. So, this is this gentleman right here. <laughs> The Pinball Python. So the copyright says 89. I think it came out in 90, though. I may be wrong about that. It was 89 or 90. So, playfield wise, um, I'm looking for Mylar. It does not have Mylar. It does have a broken piece of glass right there. <laughs> Got a little bit of wear over here. Down here, uh, there's wear, but I think most of that will clean up. A lot of wear on the the uh, centerpiece there, but I think that'll clean up. Um, let's see here. Looks like maybe there's a hairline crack in that ramp on the right side. Maybe, but I can't. Yeah, I think that's a crack. But it's so minor, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, down here, it has a guard. I don't know if they all had that or not, so that's fine. And then you've got this center ramp here. I believe it is in good shape. Let's see what that side looks like. I don't know. I guess that's chipped. Let's see. I'll take the glass off here in a minute where we can see it better. I suppose that ramp's chipped, but the way it the way it is around that rubber, I don't, I'm not concerned about that either. A lot of people are perfectionists on this stuff. I mean, they want everything brand new. I'm not like that. I don't mind if there's a little bit of damage to it. If it's minor stuff, I don't mind it at all. It doesn't bother me at all. Now, stuff like this where the plastic is chipped and it's right there in your face. Yeah, I'd like to replace that. <laughs> um, we've got a chipped plastic there. And let's see what else. I'm sure there's other ones. I don't know if that counts as chipped there by that screw. I'd probably have to look at it. Um, <laughs> I believe that's cracked there. I'm not familiar with this game. I've never done one of these, so I don't really know what I need to be looking for. But if that's all we've got is that chip there and a chip here, I'm looking for a right plastic, a right slingshot plastic, it looks like. But there may be more that's messed up that I just don't see yet. When we take it apart, we'll, we'll figure it out. But all in all, I think we're pretty good on the play field. We've, we've got a little bit of wear where the ball drops. Right there. Just a little bit. Let's see who this side is. This side has a little piece of mylar under it that looks factory. But there is a little bit of wear just past it where the ball drops. And like I said, there was a little bit there. Um... Got something going on there. Maybe a rubber melted, I guess. And over here, between the pops, everything looks good. Maybe there, there may be mylar around all that. I don't know. We'll have to pull it all off and figure it out. I hate seeing stuff like this where there's little pieces of the rubber laying all over the playfield because you just know they've been wearing that right into everything. But I don't see any major 
majorly damaged places. There's a little bit of something going on at the end of that bonefish there, right there. So we'll uh, we'll have to pop that off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and look inside it, see if we got any kind of crazy stuff going on inside. I'm going to take the back glass off, look at the boards. If everything looks good, we'll try plugging it up, plugging it uh, in and turning it on and see if it's still wanting to boot or what's going on. So inside we have our back box decals and we have the original lift channel with pieces of the broken <laughs> translate still in it. We didn't break it, but As you can see, it made a huge mess that nobody ever cleaned up. So there is glass all in this machine. The translate must have been tempered, so when it broke, it broke into a million little pieces. But let's look under it. So we're looking pretty clean at first glance. Um, the flippers look good. Need to be rebuilt, I'm sure. Uh, I don't see anything major missing or even hacked it's a nice pretty clean game other than the, the broken glass so yeah this should turn out pretty nice inside of it I found a nickel a couple pennies and a five pence piece with Queen Elizabeth II's image on it. So maybe this is an import. It's a, the date on it's uh, 1990. So maybe this uh, it's been its first little bit somewhere else. See it says Bad Cats 575, serial number 575. 310392 and then it says 115 volts 60 hertz. And then how many amps is that? Three amps. All right. And so inside our back, back box, we've got the same scenario. The back of the panel looks very clean. The front of the panel looks very clean with the, uh, the maid and the cat. Power board over here looks very clean. I don't see anything even burn up. Oh, I see some more glass down there. I'll have to get that out. I don't see any burnt connectors yet. Power supply looks very clean. Looks untouched, really. That fuse there looks a little suspicious. Um. Our soundboard looks good. I don't see any hacks yet. Knocker is still up there. And then our main board, the batteries are removed. Yay! A lot of times you'll get, you know, pinball machines and they left the batteries in them in storage. And uh, there will be corrosion everywhere. I don't see any. Sometimes it's hiding, but I don't see any. So I think we're good on that. The, uh, the board doesn't look like it's had any burns or anything. It's a nice clean little machine, really. We don't know about the display yet. Okay, so I'm going to take the I'm going to uh, get the, the vacuum cleaner and I'm going to get all this glass out. Whenever you whenever you have to vacuum out glass, you have to do it like 5 times. So I'm going to get it all out, but it won't get it all out. Once I once I go back and um, clean it again, we'll get more of it, but I'm going to get all the glass out, and I'm going to get all the glass out of the back, and then after I do, we will try to turn it on and see if it boots up. So we vacuumed out all the glass. Everything looks pretty clean. Um, this thing's in pretty nice shape, in my opinion, already, and we haven't even started. So I'm going to try plugging it in. I don't know if it's turned on or not. We'll see. It's not turned on yet. <laughs> Let's see what we get.
So we got a little bit of gibberish on the uh, display. It says factory setting because there's no batteries. Bad cats, a little bit of gibberish on the top display. Usually if you walk all the way through everything, it'll go into a track mode. So the wheel spun in the middle, it says credits kind of. <laughs> it looks like I think One I'm more time. One more time. I think I'm gonna be able to save the display. Because it, since it's giving you gibberish, sometimes that's just like the ribbon cable needs reseated, or maybe that it, something's got bad solder on it. So I think we might have a good display. We've got a booting game board. So we just need to kind of work through it a little bit. Hmm. Let me try turning it off and just reseating some of those display connectors. Okay, I wonder what uh this is blue, blue, red, all that is that it's not that one, it's this one. So this must be the display area. Try reseating all of that. Alright, let's see if I cleaned up the display any. No, still off a little bit. It's trying though. One more time. Doesn't want to take a credit. I don't think I got a broke wire. Well, I think we're getting somewhere, people. Very cool. All right, so I'm going to uh, do a little research on it, see if I can figure out what's going on with that display, and I'm going to look at my wires down here, see if we got a broken wire or something, see if I can get it to credit up, and we'll just uh, see if anything major seems broken on it, and if not, we'll start working through the game boards. Alright, so I've got an display test, and basically what's missing is the top line of the top display and the top line in the middle of the top display. So it'll appear in a second, you'll be able to see it. Yeah, see that? So there's like a T missing at the top of everything on the first display, but not on the second display. So we need to figure out what makes that show up. Okay, so I pulled the display carefully off of the board. A lot of times when you do that, the glass will kind of hang down like that. And I put it in test mode again. I don't know if I can get the camera down there where you can see it, but basically whenever it got to where it was displaying one, one of the uh, digits, I stopped the test so that it's trying to display all the segments. And I wrote down from the schematics, it's display number one, segments A and J are the two that are missing. And so those come in on J3 at pins 19 and 12. It goes to U8 at pins 11 and 12. Uh, it goes in 11 and out 12, I think. And the one or the other one, the other signal goes in U9 at 2 and 3. And then it goes in U16 at 1 and comes out 18. And, come, and the other segment goes in 3 and comes out 16. So I marked on the back of the board where all of those chips are. So this is U8 here. You gotta be real careful with this because there's like 100 volts running through it. This is U9 here and this is U16 here. And so for instance, at the very end, one of the segments comes in pin one and comes out pin 18 of U16. So I hooked up my logic probe. And if you very carefully check pin one, you've got a signal. 
and then coming out 18, you've got a signal. So th in other words, the signal's getting from the board and all the chips are fine. So it's, it's got to be either the glass, which would be bad, or the resistors just before the glass. So I'm going to take the board out and uh, check all that. Okay, folks, I found the problem. So two of the pins are broke. They're no longer soldered to the glass. So that's why it's not working. So I'm going to try to see if there's enough metal sticking out of the glass that I can solder to. And if not, I might be able to cut it just a little bit. You can't do too much, though. You let all the gas out. But see if I can solder those two pins back. I should be able to, but we will see. Very unfortunate. So I tried to solder the uh, pins back on the glass. You can't really do that because the in the in the glass, it it's not metal. It's like a, it's it's almost like a ribbon cable in there. So you're trying to solder metal to that, and it just there's no real good way to do that. I'm sure there's people out there that can probably pull it off, or you might be able to just make it touch or something, but. It's just not going to be a long-term solution. So, and I didn't—I wasn't able to do it anyway. Um, so, I'm going to order an LED uh, display for it. So, one of the things about an LED display is that it doesn't use the high voltage. So, these, um, this area right here makes it on the power. This is the power supply. This area right here makes the 100 volts and the negative 100 volts, um, which is still working because the display is still working, but this area basically isn't going to get used anymore. So I'm rebuilding the power supply, but I'm not really going to worry about that. So I've replaced these three caps. I'm going to check the, the uh, fuses to make sure they're the right um, voltage, or not voltage, uh, amperage. And I uh, replace this cap. I'm going to replace this cap too. And sometimes on these boards, like this one has a, a axial cap. And if you've seen some of my other boards, you know I never carry in axial caps, but I've always got radial caps. But some, on some of these boards, it actually has a spot where you can do either. So on this one, I'm going to put in a, a uh, radial cap in the the correct places. Oh, and I'm also resoldering the connectors. But this, all of this stuff in this game looks really clean. I think we're in pretty good shape, really. Oh, you can see right there. See how this is a radial cap? That's what was in it originally, but it has space where you could have put an axial cap instead. Sometimes they'll make it where either one will, will uh, mount. The same thing's going on here. But since it's in pretty good shape, we're not going to do too much to it. So I'm going to I'm going to re-solder uh, the connectors. I'm going to replace the big Papa cap there, and um, I'm not going to worry about the high voltage caps or anything because it won't even be used once the LED displays in it, and it's still working now. So. Um, and then we'll pop this back in and then I'm going to pull out the interconnect board because it gets bad solder on it sometimes so we'll see. So I was calling this the interconnect board but it's not. This is the auxiliary power supply. So there's more fuses to check to make sure you get the right values. More connectors to resolder. I resoldered all of them. What do you think of my solder job? Those are already connected. <laughs> Those were already connected. I didn't, but again, this is a pretty clean machine. I didn't find any bad solder. It looked fine to me after I, whenever you re-solder it, you can see the, the solder flowing together. So I don't, find, I don't see anything wrong on this board either. I'm going to check all the fuses and make sure they're the right values, and I'm going to replace these few caps that are on it. I guess there's four electrolytic caps. And, uh, then we'll see what else we can scrounge up. <laughs> but it's, it's going pretty cool, pretty good. I was just want it probably would have worked fine if you just left it alone. But I, I like to go through it and just look at everything, make sure there's nothing that looks like it's, you know, failing, or make sure there's no problems, just to make sure that we've looked at every board. Um, but whenever they're real clean, there's really not too much you can do to them. These are System 11s, and they're they're fairly reliable right out of the box so um, unless you have some major damage somewhere there's not too much to do to them so I'm gonna check the fuses um, 
clean it up a little bit, and then we'll put it back in and see what else we can find. So put the power supply back in. I didn't have the capacitor. I'm going to have to order one, but uh, we'll wait on that. I have to order the uh, display anyway. Uh, the auxiliary power supply we put back in. This particular one is late enough that it already had the fuse on the bridge rectifier. So I did a video about that on some of our other ones, but uh, if this bridge isn't fused, sometimes it'll burn up um, if the fuse shorts. But this one already has the fuse and it's factory. You can see the little label there telling you about it. So this is the interconnect board. I'm going to take that out. You've got all of those connectors on it, a few fuses and a bunch of resistors. So I'm going to take that out and check it out, see if we've got any bad solder on there. All right, so all of my resistors are within spec, and uh, you can see that all these fuses are actually for like the general illumination, I guess. Um, GIL playfield, GI input, GI power to insert, and uh, all of the fuses were fine. Nothing's burn up. I resoldered all of the connectors on the back but once again I didn't really see any that had any kind of problem so did I get that top one yep so uh, I think we're good to put it back in and uh, all we've got left is the soundboard and the main board so uh, I'll go pull something else out all right so we're testing some of the stuff and one of the problems that we have is that one of these lights doesn't work on the back glass because the little light socket fell out so I've got the light socket. We're going to have to pull that board out to replace it. But I believe all of the other lights are working. Everything's lighting up, doing its thing. So I think all of our light uh, matrix is fine, except for that one. So I'll pull that board out, and we'll, uh, we'll look at it. This is the little board on the back of that. It mounts up in there, you know. And on the front, all it is is just some lamp sockets. And this one at the top, basically the solder joints gave loose. So I've got it right here. I'm just going to solder it back in. Now I'm going to go through and solder all the other ones too. I guess on those kind of sockets, whenever you're pulling and inserting the bulb, it puts a bunch of stress on it. And I'm going to solder these too, but just a little tiny bit because I don't want to make it so thick that the connector has trouble going back on there. So we'll get that and we'll put it back in the machine. So we got in our new display. It is a Williams DIS240 from Rotten Dog. I think it'll look pretty good for us. It uh, works in, I guess it's the same display in Bad Cats, Black Knight 2000, Diner, Earthquake, Jokers, Roller Games, and Whirlwind. And then with slight modifications, it can work in Taxi and Police Force. So it looks like you add these two resist or these two jumpers for police force and taxi and then over here it says that you remove these resistors for police force and taxi so I went with this one not necessarily because I prefer it or anything but just uh, it was a, a little less expensive and I think uh, the main difference is going to be that it's just the plain orange display which is you know, I like it, the old school stuff, so I think this will be just fine for me. I believe there's other companies that make ones where you can adjust the, the uh, brightness and you can get them in different colors and stuff. You may be able to get this one in different colors too, but, but I'm going to pop it in and we will see how it looks. I've got a, this display in test so you can see it's got a couple... I guess I showed you earlier, but it's got a couple little, the top segment and that top, like the top T is gone. So I'll drop that down and uh, we'll look at the back of it. I turned it off um, because you don't ever want to un unplug a display while the game's on. It will fry crap everywhere. Do not do that. Big no-no. Um, but there's just four screws holding the thing in. So I'm going to pop those off. Pull the display out. All the connectors are in the same spot on the new one. Screw it back in and we'll see what we got. Okay, folks, so we got the new one mounted up in there. And to be honest, it looks exactly like the original one. I mean, I can't even tell the difference. But, of course, it works. So that's right up my alley. I like uh, 
Look at that. I mean, it looks exactly like. Let's go out into the game. Boop, boop, boop. If I can get out into the game. There we go. I mean, it looks exactly like the original display. I guess, the, like, even how you can see the um, the gray face on the display, that's how the other one is. Let's see. One more time. One more time, Big Daddy Rabbit. Let's see here. This thing's all floppy. Yeah, look at that. Look how similar that is. So that's right up my alley, man. I love that kind of stuff. So it has all of the benefits of the newer display where it doesn't need high voltage. It just runs all five volts and it um, it's less likely to burn out and it looks exactly the same. That's why I never really do LEDs. I know you can make them look pretty close, but I just don't like the look. I like, I like the original look. And, you know, if somebody else wants to do LEDs, they can do it. Leave them something to do. I'll do all the hard stuff. They can put in the, the light bulbs if they want. But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. So we've got that done. I'm going to pull out the power supply because I got my capacitor in that I needed. So we'll pull that out and check it out. So I had to pull this back out because, if you remember earlier, uh, the only thing that I didn't do, I didn't do the high voltage and I didn't do the 5-volt filter cap because I didn't have one. So the high voltage I don't even have to do now because I put the LED display in. And this filter cap is a 18,000 UF 25 volt axial. But it looks like a radial would fit too. So anyway, I had to order those. So one of the places you can get some of that stuff is our buddy Nick, who's one of our viewers at YorktownParts.com. So I ordered four of them, so I'll have them in the future. It'll save me the trouble. But uh, they carry all kinds of little stuff like this kind of with a uh, pinball flare to it so uh, they've got power supply rebuild kits and things like that but I just needed that one cap so I ordered some of those we got those in I'll pop it in thank you Nick we appreciate it and uh, we'll get it back up and doing its thing of course it was still working but these dry out after a while so I, I uh, since it, it filters the 5 volts that's like every chip on the board runs off that so you gotta get that right so I always want to replace those, so I'll pop a new one in and we'll be done with the power supply. So I've pulled out the sound board that does the sound and the speech, I guess. It says it does. Music and speech, music and speech, music and speech. It says PA1, but really it's SL1. These little tags all fell off of the ROMs. So I took all the chips out that were socketed and cleaned them, and now I'm just replacing the, uh, the uh, capacitors. So it'll sound clean with as little distortion as possible. And I'm going to resolder these connectors like you do on everything else. And then since it was already working, that'll be about it for the soundboard. So the only board left is the main board, and it's so clean, I was just going to leave it. But then I thought, well, I don't really want to mount the batteries on the board, you know. Um, since it's a little more high-end, I kind of wanted to make sure we had a remote battery holder on it so that people wouldn't fry the board and um, I also wanted to replace some of the caps and I wanted to look at the connections and see if I should resolder those since I resoldered everything else but uh, so the battery holder I was thinking eh, maybe I'll take it off you know just so that nobody puts batteries in it now on some on some games um, I leave the battery holder. It just it kind of depends on the game. I don't really have a sensible reason for doing it, <laughs> but sometimes I do. But when I removed the battery holder, even though it looked real clean, there was a little bit of damage. So there was a little bit of alkaline damage. You can see on see how the traces have the little black marks on them. That's after they're cleaned off. A couple of those, the black marks are just a little bit of the green. Uh, uh, masking still on it, but a couple of them are where the trace is completely split. So I think what was going on was with the corrosion, it was still connected. That's why the display was still working. These chips control the display. It goes up here to this connector, which goes out the display. Um, so I think the, the corrosion was still electrically conducting just fine. <laughs> but once I got all the corrosion off, it 
some of the traces were destroyed. So I had to put a few jumper wires on the back. I've got four jumper wires on it. But everything ohms out and everything's everything's uh, doing its thing now. So what I'm, I'm going to take a piece of tape and just tape over those wires so that they don't accidentally get snagged on something in the future whenever somebody's messing with it. And I'm going to clean my ROM chips. Uh, and then I may resolder the connectors on the back like we did on everything else. And uh, then it'll be ready to go back in the board. Now a lot of times people will do other things. They'll replace these resistors and everything. In a home environment, I don't... I don't really think it's that big of a deal. If you've got problems, fix it. Like if one of your uh, um, uh, transistors is blown up or something, but everything's working on this one already. The resistors, it's, I don't know if it's these or these, but or it might be both, but um, some of those run the, the lamps on the game. And the original lamps were 44 bulbs, which are pretty bright. And then... Uh, you know, in modern games, a lot of people put LEDs in them, which use hardly any power, or they put 47 bulbs in it, which is what we usually do. It gives you the same look, but they're slightly dimmer, and they don't use anywhere near as much power, so these resistors don't get as hot. So if you're changing the bulbs out, and you're putting LEDs, or you're putting uh, 47s in it, and it's going to be in a home environment where it's not on all the time anyway, which is what this one's going to be, you don't need to change these. And you can see, even even on this game, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just they get kind of hot. Sometimes they'll scorch the board a little bit. On the back, it's probably got a little bit of... Yeah, see the... See how it's a little bit brown from the heat? So they've gotten hot um, just operating. But it's, it's you know, it's nothing that needs to be addressed, in my opinion. So we'll put it all back together and make sure it still runs and the display still works. All right, so it's back up and running. Everything's doing its thing. Uh, we've done everything we can to the boards. So the only thing left is to work on the cosmetics. So we need to do the play field, put it all back together, and I need to do these decals on the side and uh, clean up the cabinet a little bit. And then we need to play it. But uh, I think all of our boards are as good as they're going to get. There wasn't really much wrong with them. And I'm happy to see that our display, uh, all the segments and everything are there, even with that little bit of alkaline damage we found on the board. Um, we've got our remote battery pack in, so that is uh, saving its settings down, boots up every time instead of going into uh, the test menu. So that's that for this video. So join us next time whenever we do all the cosmetic stuff, which we've already began, obviously. Um, but that'll be a separate video. We'll edit all of the... Uh, all of the cosmetic stuff together and then we'll show you how it turns out how it ends up looking and then we'll play it a little bit so we'll see you on the next one uh, leave your comments below make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you let us know what you think um, and if we missed anything let us know that too so we will see you on the next video